This video is going to be a review of vectors and some of the vector valued functions that we worked with in calculus. It's going to go through three slides that cover some of the main topics and I'll also mention some other things that you should know before you take your vector quiz. The first problem uh, talks about particle motion, which most of the vectors do. Uh, it tells you the particle uh, movement is described by x of t, y of t, and then they give you the equations for x and y, and it wants to know the speed of the particle at a particular time when time is 2. So first thing you need to know is you need to know your speed formula. The speed formula is the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared, or you can see it written as x prime t squared plus y prime t squared. So first I need to find what that dx dt and dy dt are. So x prime is going to be e to the t, and y prime is going to be 2t. We're going to plug these into the formula, and if you want, as you plug it in, you can also plug the time in just to make it a little quicker. So when I put 2 into x prime, I'm going to get e squared. When I turn around and square that, I'm going to get e to the fourth. When I put 2 into y prime, I get 4. When I square that, I get 16. Now you can either leave your answer like this, if this was a non-calculator problem, that's the way you would see the answer uh, listed as multiple choice. If you are allowed to use a calculator, more often than not, they will use a decimal instead, and this decimal is equivalent to 8.402. As I mentioned in class, most of these vector problems don't use units, so don't be surprised when you're looking through the problem and you don't see any units mentioned. That just means that you don't have to use any, any units. Next question came from part of a practice AP question where it had multiple steps. Um, it starts off pretty similarly, telling we have the particle moving. Uh, the difference this time is this time they give you the derivative, they give you the velocity components, x prime and y prime. And they also give you an initial condition. They tell you at time zero the particle's at zero, zero. That's going to come into play at the end of this problem whenever we need to find c values. We need that initial condition. So part A wants you to do two things. It wants you to find the speed uh, at time zero and the acceleration vector at time zero. So speed's going to be a review of what we just talked about. Uh, this one's actually a little easier just because we already have dx dt and dy dt, which we know we need for speed, so we don't have to derive. Um, we are going to be putting zero in, so what we have is we're going to have 3e to the, when we put 0 in, 3e to the 0 squared, plus when I put 0 into y prime, I'm going to get negative 4 squared. This one actually could be done without a calculator. Uh, you get 3 squared, which is 9, 4 squared, which is 16. The square root of 9 plus 16 is 5. So that's my speed. Pretty quick. Acceleration vector is going to take a little more work. We know that if we have the first derivative, the acceleration vector is the second derivative. So you can either label it as acceleration and use the correct notation, or you can write x double prime and y double prime. Uh, I'm going to use the vector notation that we started using in class. Acceleration, we need to derive 3e to the 3t. We're going to get 9e to the 3t. And when I derive 2t minus 4, I'm going to get 2. Now, before you move on, remember that they want specifically the acceleration vector when time is 0. So if I put 0 in for t, e to the 0 is 1, so I end up with just 9 and 2. And then the last piece of this problem wants to know the x and y coordinate of the particle. So essentially, it's asking for position of the particle when time is 4. Well, if you're given velocity, if you're given the first derivative, in order to get to position, you need to integrate. And you will need to do these separately, so I'm going to write each of them down. First, we're going to need to integrate the x prime, which is 3e to the 3t. And that's going to give us our x. And we're also going to need to integrate y prime to get our y. So we'll start with integrating the 3e to the 3t. Um, the integral of e to the 3t is 1 third e to the 3t, but the 1 third adjustment will cancel with the 3 that's already there. So we end up with just e to the 3t plus c. Here's where this initial condition comes in. We know that when time is 0, so when I put 0 in for time, so I'll get e to the 0, which is 1, I have an x uh, value of 0. So that means c is negative 1. So my equation is e to the 3t minus 1. And then I'm going to go over to the y. And when I integrate that, I'm going to get t squared minus 4t plus c. Again, using the initial condition of time is 0, the y is also 0. So I get 0 equals 0 minus 0 plus c. So c is just 0. And then finally, the answer to the question, we want to know where is the particle specifically at 4. And when I put 4 in, um, 
for sake of how large the number gets, I'm not going to get a decimal for the x. Uh, you're going to have e to the 12th, which is huge, minus 1. So I'm just going to leave it as e to the 12th minus 1. And when I put 4 into the y value, 4 squared minus 4 times 4, that is 0. This particular problem, as you can tell from the arithmetic, was really designed to not need a calculator. You will run into ones, especially on the quiz, that are a lot messier, that you'll use a calculator more um, as you're going through and finding C values and finding particular coordinates at a different time. The last problem that I want to walk you through is a little bit of a review of what we did with parametrics and talking about slope and tangent lines to, with parametrics. So we're given two parametric equations, or if you want to think it as vector, our position vectors for a particular particle. And we want to write an equation of a line tangent to the particle's path at 2. And then we want to determine if, uh, when the path would have a vertical tangent. So we're going to start with the first piece, which means if I want a line tangent, I need the slope. So I need to remember how we derive things that are written in this form. The derivative dy dx is dy dt over dx dt. That will be what helps us figure out slope. So dy dt looking over at y of t would be 3e to the 3t minus 6. And then dx dt would be 4t minus 3. So I want to know specifically at time 2. So I'm going to put 2 into both so I can get my slope. If I put 2 into the top, I'm going to have e to the 0. So e to the 0 is 1. So I end up with just 3 on the top. If I put 2 into the bottom, I end up with 8 minus 3, which is 5. So there's my slope. And now I need to find the x and y coordinate, because I know when I'm writing an equation of a tangent line, I need the slope. I need the x and the y. So here's where I come back to the, my original equations and put 2 in to get my x and y. If I put 2 into the x equation, I'm going to get 2 times 4, which is 8. 8 minus 6, which is 2. And if I put 2 into the bottom equation, I'm going to get e to the 0, which is 1. So I'm going to write my equation in point slope. This one works out really nicely, so you could go to slope intercept without much difficulty, but because we know we can get some really messy answers, it's just nice to keep working things in um, slope intercept. Sorry, I put a 1 there, not a 2. And then the last piece, when will the path have a vertical tangent? Vertical tangent meaning I have an undefined slope. So when I'm looking at the way that slope is defined, undefined slope would mean that the bottom, dx dt, equals 0. So first thing I'm going to write is I need dx dt equal to 0, which means I need 4t minus 3 equal to 0. And then I solve for t, so I end up adding 3 and dividing by 4. I should expect that time is positive and I get a time of 3 fourths. If the question would have said, where is there a horizontal tangent, you are looking at the numerator and seeing when the numerator equals 0. But you will see questions like that that show up not only in parametric type problems, but also vectors since they go hand in hand. So as you go through this video, the kind of the key things that sh should stick out is that when you're working with things that are written as vectors, you should be able to work with derivatives to go from position to velocity and from velocity to acceleration and then plug any particular time in. You should be able to go in reverse from acceleration to velocity and velocity to position by integrating. And in that situation, you will need initial conditions uh, to go from one step to the next. You should be able to find speed. You should be able to find distance traveled, which we didn't do on here. I know we did multiple times in class. It is just the integral uh, from time 1 to time 2 of the square root of the dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. And then you should be able to work with writing tangent lines and coming up with slope and using the way that we derive it to answer questions about slope or tangent lines.